Hi. What better way than to introduce a new idea in geology uh, with a little bit of Greek? Um, these words, dia and chronos, um, are words we use for a, a new idea in geology. Let me uh, just show you how they pronounce. The word we use is diachronos. If we translate from the Greek, what that actually means is through time. We need to look at um, beds that get deposited uh, at different points in geological time. So that's the same bed which has different ages. Let me show you what I mean. This follows an idea that we call Walther's Law. Now Walther's Law states that the vertical succession of fasces reflects lateral changes in the environment. Fasces, remember, is an A-level word for sedimentary environment. What that actually means is that when a depositional environment moves from one place to another, perhaps as a result of sea level change, perhaps, um, sediments of, of different environments then get deposited on top of each other. So the idea is that um, certainly with the sea level change, the we don't just get a complete change of environment overnight. What we see is perhaps the location where the beach is uh, will move. Perhaps related to this idea of transgression and regression. Now you're going to need your handout um, that's entitled Diachronism to work on for this. Let me show you what this looks like. Here we have um, a, a sketch of a sedimentary environment. So more landward side on the left, uh, deeper sea to the right. Now if we have changes in sea level with transgressions and regressions, exactly where these places are will change. How they, are, you know, the depth of water, the energy of the environment will change in different places. So if we look at the three outcrops that are shown here, outcrop A, outcrop B and outcrop C, these are all deposited at the same time in a similar area. Yet the sequence of sediments we see is different because we'll have different sea levels um, or different depths of water, perhaps should I say, in different places and therefore different energy environments. So the vertical sequence and the changes in the vertical sequence that we see it reflects lateral changes of the sedimentary environment. Let's have a look at this example. It's a bit made up, but we'll illustrate the ideas. We have here a, um, again, shallow water uh, sediments um, being deposited uh, uh, in a sort of a shoreline type environment. Within this uh, area, though, we see different fasces, different sedimentary environments, lagoonal muds, reefs, uh, screes that fall off reefs, and then a sort of a deeper mud being deposited. On the vertical axis here, you'll see these are the time zones, T1 to T5. T1 obviously being the oldest, T5 being the youngest. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to draw uh, four sketch sedimentary locks. That's one here, one here, one here, and the last one over here. Okay. Draw them so that uh, we can compare them side to side with uh, T1 at the base, T5 at the top. And just sketch in what type of, uh, of rock, or which formation of rock, should I say, would it be deposited in each time zone.
when we've done that, what do you notice about those beds? In particular, what do you notice about the reef deposit? Yeah, this Julesville limestone formation. How old is that? What can we see? So, to conclude, as we started with Greek, we'll finish with Greek. Let's just uh, sort that out. These lateral changes in sedimentary environment can lead to vertical changes in sedimentary sequences. It's related very much to the idea of transgression and regression that we covered in a previous lesson. Perhaps what we need to do next, though, is look at a real example of where this happens. But that's for part two of this particular lesson. I'll see you then.